You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live, live, live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome back to Fate Radio. I am Kat Hobson, your host, with my fantastic guest, Judy Griffin, Dr. Judy Griffin. And her website is www.aromahealthtexas.com. And this has been one of my favorite conversations. I am learning so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. I'm learning too. <laughs> well, I am just so fascinated by everything that you do. The I didn't know that you distilled through steam, for one thing. I, I don't really know what I thought you did. But it's old fashioned. I do everything. It's not because it's old fashioned. It's because of the purity. That's what alchemists did. And they always used glass. So I use all glass. No stainless steel, no copper, only glass. And I hand separate the oils from the water. Best I can. The water will still have some oils in it, but I'm I'm good with that. I I want purity. I don't want chemicals in there. Well, for someone who was not really sure what she thought about aromatherapy (laughs) (laughs) or really understood about it either, for that matter, you know, I have found this conversation so enlightening. You know, I have friends that are into the various essential oil companies Uh and who do the the different herb packets to make your life better and things of that nature. I just think that the chance to learn from you has made me understand more about why I would be wanting to go to a smaller company who has a more pure product. Yeah, I and yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, it's and you know what? You don't need much of it because it is pure. So it's not about size; it's about quality. Right, right. Are most people, are most companies, like the big, I guess three or four, here in the U.S. Do they? Everybody talks about quality, but you don't hear as much about purity. Do you, are you one of the few people that utilizes the the steam and the hand distillery and and that kind of thing? Yes, yes. And the purity it starts with your plants. You know, I'm out there with them, even if I don't pull every weed or snip every you know dead limb I am out there with those plants and so before they ever got to the lab I have communication with them I have a relationship with them and I know I don't take every single rose for one thing you don't ever do that we always leave abundance there because we have beneficial insects and other reasons in nature to do that but you pick the purest flowers or plant parts that I'm going to distill, and it makes a huge difference. Huge. Well, I think that your relationship with them is is probably my favorite thing because when I read that, I knew what you were talking about. And and people will say, "Well, I want to be an herbalist, but I don't. I I, I don't." And it's like, "Oh, what plants do you grow? Oh, I don't want to grow plants." It's like. Then you don't want to be an herbalist. I mean, come on. I, I want to be know. an herbalist who doesn't deal with plants. No, I know people like that. And I've, I've taught them in classes and stuff like that. They're intellectually intelligent. But, you know, the most they can do is sell you somebody's product that, in a little capsule or something or in a little bottle. It's not the same. And I think... If you grow plants and have a relationship with them, 
even if you choose, I choose, let's say, to buy your product and, and use it. Um, we don't all make everything we need, so all the time. I would still, by nature, choose the most pure product because I have that that relationship myself with purity. It's everything. It's everything. I agree. Well, I, I see... I see things in people that, and, and see them get over incurable diseases just time after time after time. And since, since I was born, because my, my brother had an incurable disease, I think it was just like karma or whatever you call it, that I was going to end up working with people like that. But, I mean, they're almost all the people I've worked with have have had very incurable type illnesses. And it's amazing to see these people turn it around. I give them credit, but I know that the purity of products makes a difference, makes a huge difference. Well, and the, the indomitable spirit that they bring to that, yep. you know, because if they've gone to the effort to research this fully and to get there, I think that makes a huge difference and it shows their courage and determination, don't you? It does, but some people do it more intellectually and that's still helpful. But I'll, I'll tell you about one person who had an inoperable liver cancer tumor and um, came to me and he said, well, all I've been offered is... is um, it's inoperable, so they said I could go to um, a medical, big medical clinic in Houston and um, MD Anderson, and I could have experimental uh, something. And and they said I'd I'd live maybe eighteen more months. And I said, well, how long? Did you ask him how long would you live if you didn't have the experimental medicine? So he goes back and he asks the doctor, and he goes, oh, well, you'll live five years. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. It's like so. I mean, I really work with people, so they know how to communicate with whoever they're going with. Right. But this person was doing so well, and I and I got to the point where I gave him an essence for you know anger. Okay. And I told him, just put it on, on your right side, where, where the liver is, just a few drops. Do you know he, he couldn't do it? He tried it one time, and it was just such an experience that he couldn't handle it. And I very seldom see that. I mean, almost never see that happen. What kind of experience? Well, he couldn't deal. He, he felt like he had to deal with his anger, and he didn't want to do that. So he died. He got well, he got totally well, and then he died. Got well from cancer. He died from the anger. Pain. Wow. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of responsibility. We just think about getting well, but there's a lot of responsibility, and we may be asked to give up food or to do something that we don't want to do. And how much do you want it? It's always what it's about. So like an energy exchange? Yeah. You're always given something, but you're always given something. You're not, it's never taken away and you just, it's gone. Your favorite chewing gum, you'll never see it again. No, you'll find another one you like even better or something else. You'll discover the beauty of flowers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I am... I am so glad one of the my favorite things that we've discussed here was the sounds, the melodies. Yes. And while flowers appreciate me not trying to nurture them, <laughs> I think, <laughs> trees are cool with it. But, yeah. you know, it's also the, like I said, I hear that. I hear the songs in the wind. And 
I think that's probably part of my ancestry, but mm -hmm. it's, it's really cool. And I taught my grandson that when he was one, maybe wow. we were just sitting out in the hammock on a gray, windy day and you could hear the wind coming because we still had leaves up. And I said, do you hear that? That's the wind. If you wait just a minute, it will kiss you. Oh. And he looked at me like, okay, Bebop, you've lost your mind. <laughs> but he went ahead because I held my face up and he did too. And when it touched him, he just kind of looked at me. And I said, that's the wind. Wow. That's, and that's wonderful. What a gift. It's just a great, that was probably one of the premier experiences of my life is to be able to share that. Yes. And for him to get it. Yeah. You know, it's just, and I'm sure, I'm certain that my mom hears, hears the plants because she seriously would come to rescue them. Definitely. So, definitely. So, Some you know, kind of communication level going on. Yeah. Yeah. And that comes into the line of people who are, in my opinion, psychics or empaths and such. Everybody has a gift if you pay attention to it. Definitely. Definitely. And with what you do, I'm so glad that you paid attention. <laughs> because uh, you do make such a difference in people's lives. It's It's been a phenomenal experience, huh? Humbled. Well, I think that I am from from hearing about your experiences. To be able to just talk to someone and understand what their need is and go about creating what will meet that need is an astounding gift. And to be able to do it just by voice interaction blows me away. I think you're very neat, and I'm glad that you hated that calling. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be on your show. It's really been like talking to a friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I think that we're supposed to be friends. Yes. So, and I've I've just learned so much, and my audience has too. We've we've been having a couple of people in chat tonight. Sundays are not usually great for chat for some reason. People are trying to get everything ready and their ducks in a row for the week. They listen, but they don't take the time to chat. And, you know, I I know that I'll be getting emails when we get off the air in the morning to say, oh my gosh, I can't believe da 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 I get that a lot. So I think this is going to be a very audience responsive experience they're, they're welcome to email me if that's acceptable of course that's acceptable why don't you tell people how to get in touch with you uh, they still they can go through the website is the easiest thing um, aromahealthtexas.com texas is spelled out and you know if you if you can't find it if you google judy griffin it'll still come up and through the website, it has to contact us, and it, it comes right to an email. And I'll get right back to them. It won't be somebody else. It'll be me answering. Well, they will do that. And I will go ahead and put that on my post when I, I share the recording of the show, too, so that they'll be able to find you. Great. So, I enjoy it. Well, I look forward to the next. Okay, that's a deal. All right. Well, I want to make...